Hi, I'm Lars. Welcome back to the shop. This video is about the Onefinity Elite Foreman Electrical. Um, just want to let you guys know in Infinity, I did get this. This was much appreciated. Um, this is really cool. I'm going to set this up in my shop someplace and everyone's going to see it sitting up on the wall. This is the controller for the Masso in the Onefinity system. All right. This is the VFD uh, spindle enclosure. I think is what they call it. Yeah, VFD spindle kit, VFD enclosure version four for from PW and CNC. Um, with my system, I did not get the router. I did get the spindle, obviously, because I have the VFD enclosure here. Uh, so the router plug will not be being used. The main AC is what is used to power the Masso and the actual Onefinity CNC machine, the Foreman. This outlet here goes to a vacuum. All right. So I'm assuming what happens is when you plug this into an outlet, when the Masso kicks on, it can kick the vacuum on. This would kick your router on normally. But since I have a spindle and it's wired into the Masso and it's all programmed in there, the Masso will actually tell this guy to turn on through the spindle cable that's attached to it. All right? Or, I'm sorry, not the spindle cable. Through this PWM. So this gets con connected to the Masso. Um, this guy is 220, so I need a dual 20 breaker for that. Now, in my barn, I don't have electric all over the place, okay? I've got a little bit of electric for my power tools. I don't want this on any circuit breaker, same circuit breaker as any of my other power tools, all right? If this is running and you click the miter box or something like that, you're going to get a draw on that miter box. I'm not saying this is going to blow up, but it's going to draw a current from it. It could slow it down. It could adjust something. So, and even though it's on the same breaker, it's a 100 amp breaker, that's the main breaker out here, um, it could still do a draw. So there's little things like that that I'm kind of worried about. So there will be a plug coming out of this and it will be going into an APC or a filtering system for electricity. Okay, so it will, it, that will keep a consistent amount of current on here. So there's a capacitor or a battery bank, if you will. So like your laptop, if you have a laptop computer and you unplug it, your, you know, your PC doesn't go and then you know, start moving again. It just, it's unplugged It's because it's running off the battery. Uh, laptops are the original hybrids, if you will. All right. So I'm doing the same thing with this. That this will have a battery backup of like two hours. I doubt it will last that long. But you know, that's, what they're, that's what the specs always say. So that'll keep this, it'll keep the filtering of the electricity coming into it, all right? But either way, I gotta put in a circuit breaker for it. Now, in very small print here, well, it's not very small, it's not as big as Onefinity, uh, it's important to prevent overload, the vacuum cord must be plugged into an outlet that is on a different breaker to the main power cord. So here's the main power cord. And I've got another breaker in the other barn. That's where my vacuum system will be. And that's going to be another breaker for it. All right. Um, I also could probably put the vacuum on the same thing as my other power tools that are in here. Um, or I can just run on a line. Right now, I don't need it. So I'm just running this line and this line. I just wanted to call this out about the this plug needed to be on its own power breaker because I'm trying to do this to help everybody else that's getting information because when I was looking this up there's a lot of information from Onefinity but there's not a lot of information from other people about how to set this stuff up. So if you are setting this up in your garage you do have a vacuum set up out there and what you know whatever you know whatnot you got going on um, you may need to put an extension cord to get this to a different breaker than this guy is on. Now, the way electrical works, it's not a different outlet because you could have up to 9, 10, 12 outlets. If you're running 20 amp, you know, 12 2 gauge wire, you could probably put up to, you know, 12 outlets on it. 
Um, for residential, there's no code for how many outlets you can really put on. Commercial is a whole different story. Um, so be aware of that. You might be needing to run that to another outlet. If you're having, you know, surge issues or whatever, um, something, you know, weird's going wrong, that might be the problem. A lot of people on, on the threads, on Facebook or whatever, they all say it's EMI. Um, that could be it too. But I would be more looking at this as a draw happening on this and causing the computer to freak out a little bit. You might also put a surge protector or a battery like an APC or a trip light or something like that in front of this that could prevent this from happening. It could prevent the surge from happening because you have a battery that's in the way. All right. Just thoughts. Not saying at all any of this is going to work. I'm just telling you what I'm going to do. I'm going to have my circuit breaker. It's going to be an outlet. It's going to be a battery pack. And the disc is going to plug into that. All right. And that hopefully will keep everything happy. So we're talking about that for seven minutes. Um, hopefully there's a lot of information that got to you. Let's get these guys plugged in. Um, so I'm going to hook up my 220 and I'm going to hook up my 15. I'll test them out. Hopefully everything will work and we'll be good to go. This is going to be run on 14.2 uh, cable. This is going to be run on 12.2. And the reason that it's going to be run on 12.2 is this is the cable that they sent from PWN CNC. Let's tilt this back up a little bit. So this is the cable that was sent by PWN CNC right there. All right. It's an L6-20R. This is the outlet you need. It's an L6-20R. This might be a dash 20P, but the outlet you need is a 20R. This is a locking outlet. So when you put these together, they click and then they turn, turn and they lock. Okay. Now, why is this going to be a 12-2 cable and not a 12-3 cable? Well, the reason is there's only two, two legs on it. You got these two legs and you got the ground down here at the bottom. All right. As you can see, if it would have been a 12-3, I'd have one wire. I can't really connect anything. All right. We just have two legs going and a ground. Uh, this is going to be X and X is going to be Y, right? When you do electricity, you're going to have a black wire, and you're going to have a white wire, and you're going to have your ground wire. You need to mark that white wire with red tape or red Sharpie or something because that is a leg wire. Okay, there's two legs. Um, if not, someone comes and does an inspection on your stuff, they're going to be, why is there a white wire connected to this circuit breaker? So when you mark it with red, it's like, oh, well, this person knew what they were doing. It's actually a 220 and, you know, they're using a 12-2. So make sure you do that. Other than that, I think it's just time to start getting some wire run. We're looking at 30 inches to be where the top of the table is. The rails on the side are nine inches tall. So that gives you a total of 39 inches tall, which the table that we have currently for the table saw is 38 inches tall. So that would be a total of one inch taller with the rails. Um, the rails got to be taken into consideration. They sit like, I don't know, five feet apart, something to that effect. So when you're leaning in, you got to think about re being able to reach over those rails to get to the center or get, you know, into the middle of the, of the cut. So I think bringing this down a little bit is going to be good. Um, so I don't really need any support here for this, but I may, I'm going to put some sort of a ledge over top of this for the electric. So since we're at 30 inches, since we're at 30 inches, 
that's the top of the table. All right, so you're going to have uh, probably a three quarter inch piece of plywood on top of that, which is there. So that brings you down to 29 and a quarter. And then I don't know how tall the actual, because I'm starting to think about a torsion box now, but if a torsion box is, say, maybe five inches or six inches thick, it's going to bring it down to about here. So that's where everything's going to mount. So you're talking about 23 inches down. So I need this box to be somewhere down here. So I will need to cut this. A really easy way to measure this and cut is just put this in here and then either just draw a line on the side like that. So the outlets are going to have to be down in this area someplace. Five foot. Three foot, seven and three quarter. So that's eight foot, seven and three quarter. So here's eight foot, three and a half makes seven, and three eighths make three quarter. That's the center. So since that's the center, my board is going to be 80 inches wide, so I can go 40 inches that way and put a mark. And then I can come 40 inches this way from that. And I can put another mark. And that's where the outlet's going to have to sit, at least under this. We're near here. There. Now, will this be here? I have no idea. When this board goes in, it needs to be to have this outlet under here somewhere. All right. So that's why I'll need to know where this is at. So when I run electric to it, I'm gonna have to bring the electric down. Get it underneath of here and then get this into a box. Yeah, being that this is a barn, I'm probably going to, I need to build some sort of a shelf over top of this. So the CNC machine will not back up clean in this wall. It'll stop in here somewhere, um, probably within six inches of it. But it's going to have a, t uh, I don't know what you call it, a cover to it. Um, with the roof of the cover being plywood, there's going to be supports in the middle. And then it's going to come down on the sides. This side will be solid, the back will be solid because I'm not going to be getting into the back of it. Um, well, I don't need to see in it, but these both still need to be somehow taken out of the way, if you will. So it's going to have like a, uh, a gazebo kind of structure. It's going to have a, you know, post here, post here, post here, post here, and then probably some sort of a little bit of an incline on the top so it might even look a little bit like a roof just so that when it sets down I can have you know a decent truss system in it. Um, it, is, it is what it is. I mean it's just the way it's going to be. So, But that is the thought pattern that I've got going through my head to figure out where this electric has to go. So uh, let me get some screws put this in place. put screws in a, in a board like this and you need to get them in at an angle okay that's what we're going to be doing we're going to be putting the screws in like that start about an inch back here like this and screw your put your screw in straight all right, well, straight-ish, <laughs> not really straight. And then slowly bend it this way. And that'll go right where you want it, all right?
So, you only need about four fingers wide of wire hanging out of the front of the box. The back of this is going to go in about right here. So come down about an inch, take your exact your your uh, utility knife, and at a 45 degree angle, put a little notch in there. So when you bend it back, you get a little crack. Exactly on the other side, do the exact same thing. Okay? Wiggle these back and forth until they begin to break free, which now they're separating, and push them back together. Do not take them out. Take the tab in the back. There's a couple different variations of these things. Either they're going to turn up or you're going to push in. And then push this in until that crack gets past this hole in the back about a half inch or so and then pull that sheathing off. Bring these up and down, rip those off. So a little bit of wiring 101. I actually have a video out on how to do electrical, I think it's called like electrical wiring, basic wiring or something like that. Now these have got to get tacked to the wall. I don't know what code is everywhere, but Basically, you need to support wire, so I'm going to put a tack right here. And I don't think this is going to work. This is hemp fur, so it's very, very, very hard wood. So I'm going to need a, a bigger tack like that. Need my, my my blocking. All right. You don't really want to smash the wire in any shape or form. So the reason I'm using my pliers because my hammer head keeps bouncing off the wall so that I can extend this out by putting this in the back on the nail and then just hit my pliers and it transfer that energy out to the end as long as I'm pulling up with it. So that's good. Now I can put an outlet in here and I can get the rest of this wire tight. Okay, so for now This is an outlet, all right? If you take this, if you take and cut this, all right? You can see that very well. But right there, there's a little brass bridge, if you will, between these two. If you cut this on each side, then you end up with two individual outlets, all right? So one outlet, another outlet. I'm not going to cut these yet, but when I do hook the vacuum up, I will definitely take this back apart, cut this off, and I'll run it to another circuit. So, in the meantime, we need to go down to 14 gauge and knock off about half inch the wire, this the casing on here. Second thing we need to do is we need to get a pair of needle nose pliers. Uh, and take this and turn it into a little hoop. And then actually this has got a this will work even better. This has got a little hole on it that you can take them and you can literally wrapped them around the ground, which works really well. But now I need a screw gun, because I don't have a screw gun. All right. And then, all you're doing with the Phillips head is you're just slowly 
spinning down the screws. You're not going to crimp them down. If you do, you're going to strip these out. Uh, two screws on each side. So break them loose with the screwdriver because for some reason they're always backed out. Alright, so I like to put my outlets in where the ground is on the bottom. So I'm going to take the bottom screws and tighten them down because we're not going to use them at the moment. And I also do not like using these little plugs in the back because if you ever have to get your outlet out, uh, <laughs> you might as, well just call, might as well just cut the wire. So these are going to get a hoop on them too, a little hoop. Nothing major. Now, rule of thumb for wiring. Gold always gets black. That's not my rule, that's just the rule. And always carry a big screwdriver and a little screwdriver with you. Little screwdriver is to put plates on, big screwdriver is to put these screws in, to tighten them up. Um, you can't get the torque with the smaller screwdriver that you can get with the big one. The bigger screwdriver will cover the screw all the way across and this way here you get a better torque. So you can accordion, accordion these things in where you kind of just kind of push down and back and forth like that and everybody should be hooked up right. This is really a simple outlet, there's only one wire going to it so it's on a breaker all by itself. There we are. Cool. Now, uh, my plate. Just happen to have one here that is uh, stainless. Not didn't mean to. Get a stainless, I just have one that's stainless, and the 220 plate's going to be stainless, so this is kind of appropriate. So the smaller screwdriver is to put these screws in. Well, that's how you change out an outlet or add, put an outlet in. Now, <clears throat> let's go get the electrical box worked up. I need to get this wire cut, so I'm kind of taking some estimates here. So this is going to be the bend that's going to come in. When you put wire into a box, always put extra in. So usually a good rule of thumb is to go up one side and come down the other, and that's where I need to cut. All right, so again, with the wire stripping of the sheeting, sheathing, right about here is where I want it. I'm going to get in front of the knife. Do that again, so I took my eyes off it. Yep, right about there. So you're gonna put a little bit of a nick in the back and a little bit of a nick in the front. I'm gonna rock this thing back and forth. Sometimes you need to cut the little edge a little bit, especially as the day goes on, you get tired. All right, now feed this into the secondary, as a secondary hole. Now, I'm gonna tell you something right now that's probably gonna freak everybody out. This box is live, all right? It is a live box at this moment. Right now. Um, so I have to be extremely careful with touching it. Now I'm going to show you that this is live. This is the ground. I'm going to hold this in this hand. And I'm going to touch one of the legs. There you go. So that's 121. Here's the other leg over here, which is 121. What I don't want to do is I don't want my hands in here where I'm touching things. Okay, and I don't want wires to be in here where they're touching things. It's very bad. 
So we don't usually, you know, play around like that. So this is going to actually be wire. It's going to be a little bit longer, which is which is okay. You see, I need to bring this back like this and get this in here, and that should give me enough wire to get up to the top. So I'm going to cut a little more of this off before I pull the sheathing off. See about that much. So I feel bad because I just wasted a little bit of wire, but these guys come off, and then here comes off that. And then the, the ground, I'm going to just open up, well I got one of these open already, so there's a screw that's open here. I'm going to take the ground, be very careful about this, I'm going to tuck this in behind everything and slide it in. And I'm going to make sure the ground stays low, alright, low as I can get it. And I'm going to tighten it off. Now the reason that you put more wire in than just wiring it directly to that breaker, because say, say I put this breaker in and I put it here in this, in this uh, breaker slot and then I needed to move it. Now why would I move it? There's all kinds of reasons you might move a breaker. So one reason you might take a breaker out and move it from here to here is say this was open and you needed this breaker to become a double and there was another open down here so you might just move a couple breakers over or you know whatever you need to do so 15 amp breaker all right breaker is going to be off so that means if i were to touch my finger on this i'm not getting i'm not getting zapped okay you're going to hang it on the outside you're going to hook it in find the little bar and it's going to lock in i can turn it on now if you want Nothing's going to happen. The second thing I need to do here, since this is the this is the 110, I need to get these two here stripped out. And you only need to take off about, you know, half inch. This one here might be a little too long. And then this needs to go into the neutral bar, which guess what? The neutral bar is the same as the grounding bar. Now, why is it the same? Well, the reason it is is because this box is getting grounded. There is a ground wire that goes up to the top, to the main. There's a, a wire back here. Let me see. Alright, so the neutral is essentially going to be, it's not essentially, it is. It's going to be attached to the same thing that the, the, grounding, bar is going to, the grounding wire is going to be attached to. This is the ground wire coming from our house, all right? So that's going to get wrapped around and it's going to go down here with this leg and that leg. And they're both going to go down and they're going to go out. Now, there's a bar at the top that connects to this and then there's a six gauge, I think it's six gauge, it might be an eight gauge. No, it's six gauge. Six gauge grounding wire comes down and touches into this there's another one that comes over and touches into this. So it doesn't matter where you put your neutral and your ground, they're going to be connected to each other. And if you don't think they are, well they're all screwed to this, which is your box, which gets grounded too. Through this wire in the back here, I don't know if you can see it down at the bottom, but this wire comes into the back and all the way down, comes out of your Comes, comes through here, comes through this hole, goes through a little hole in the back, and then it comes down and gets buried into the ground 15 feet deep. So in order to get this circuit hooked up, finished up, make sure that's off, take your screwdriver out, see if this is loose, it is, 
and put it in one of the slots on the bottom. There's two, there's two slots, one on the left, one on the right, and you can tighten that up. Now, pull on it a little bit, make sure you're, you're tight, and turn it on. Now, let's test it out, go back to voltage, AC voltage. I'll hold this over here in my, my left hand while I put this on the ground, and hang on to that, and we'll touch that. 121, 121.8, turn it off. And it's dissipating, but there's still a little bit of voltage on there. 128. All right. So that's working. Looks pretty good. Let's go check the. Let's go check the outlet. This device is something that every household needs. Right there. If you don't have one of these, go buy one. So these these. If this is hooked up correctly, these two ambers should light up. These two lights are amber. If there's a problem, you're going to get a red, or one of these is not going to be lit up. And there's all kinds of little instructions on here about uh, open ground, open neutral, open hot, uh, hot and ground are switched, um, hot and neutral are switched, or the connection is correct. So I'm going to plug this in, and you're going to see that was hooked up correctly. All right. If any of the wires were switched around, and they were going to both be the same because that little bar was not broken off, but if anything was wrong, you would be getting a warning on this. So that is it for hooking up the electric for the PC or, Ma or Maso um, unit for the Onefinity that I did for me. All right. Now. I'm going to just put a disclaimer on this, and there's going to be a disclaimer put on the beginning of the video too, if it, um, which is the same one. Um, I am not an electrician. I usually share things that I have experienced in my life. This is something that I am sharing, and how exactly I did it for documentation of myself. Um, if anybody has any questions, um, feel free to put them in the comments. Someone will answer it's an electrician, but this is the way that I've been doing things for the last 50 years. All right, have a good day. All right, that, so that, that gets the portion done for the Maso Infinity, for the, the PC portion of everything. The second thing I need to hook up is for the spindle, which is a 220. That's gonna be a little bit different, okay? That's gonna be running instead of the 14-2 wire and going to a single 15 amp breaker. It's gonna be running 12-2 wire and going to a dual 20 breaker. That will go into the bottom box down here because their cable's a little longer. This, that's all the, the only reason is for it. All right, so let's get started on that one. All right, to save everybody from the anguish of me running wire, I ran this wire off camera. Same rules apply though. You need about four fingers past the, the, the box. And we're going to Cut this at a 45 degree angle on each side. Bend it back and forth till it breaks. And then we're going to tuck it in. Now this is 12 gauge wire, okay? So the only reason I'm saying that is this is thicker wire. It's harder to bend. Then it's going to get tucked back in back of the box and come through. Like that, and then pull the cover off. Spread these out. Get the uh, paper off the ground. All right, so pretty much the same ordeal that we just went through, but with a different outlet. So this is going to be a 12. I'm only going to take off very little amounts of this uh, sheathing just enough so that I can get get them into this. So this is the 
down at the bottom, okay, these are, I believe these are labeled. Nope, doesn't say X or Yeah, they do. They're, they're right here. That's why you can't see them because it's black on black. So this on the edge here says X. This on the edge here says Y. Don't know if you can see them, but maybe you just have to trust me on it. It says Y, but it's black on black, and this is the ground. Ground is always ground. So we're going to open up all these guys so that we can put wires in them. Now, here's the big difference when you're doing something like this with the legs. You need red wire, red tape. Yeah. Sorry about that. Um, you need red tape because we have a black wire and a white wire. And by code, if you have something that is running electric, you either need to have a black, a, a black wire or a red wire. We do not have a red wire. We have a white wire. So, code says, at least here in Ohio, you need to mark that white wire with red tape. Now, why don't we mark it with black tape? Because when we get to the other side, well, it's not, you got two blacks. Okay, so let's take the, uh, the ground wire, slide that up in there. Everybody's happy. I'm going to tighten that down. Real nice and pretty like that. Get that real tight. Um, doesn't really matter to this. I'm going to put the, the white on the Y, just so everybody knows. Tighten that down. Ugh. Then you're going to put the black on the X and then tighten that down. Oh good. Just kind of fold it back in there. Um, I'm going to put the lock on the bottom because, well actually I'm going to put the lock on the top because I like to be able to read what it is. That guy's going to sit in there just like that. We can put the screws in that we got. That's good. So here's the two screws. It all depends on the outlet. that guy in the top, put the one on the bottom, try to get them straight, and then let's get the plate on. Alright, so I need to get this all tacked up, but we're going to do that after we get the other side hooked up. Alright, so I've already got the, the wire measured out. Um, get it pulled up through here. Give me enough room to get nailed. Pull that off. Now, the big difference, the only thing we're putting on the grounding bar will be the ground. So let me kind of shorten that up a little bit. Um, I need a screwdriver. Forgot me a screwdriver. All right, so just gonna grab another hole here. And these things can all be combined on the one. I can put them all in the same hole. It doesn't really matter. Um, the ground goes to the grounding bar. So if somebody ever tells you that circuits cannot be all grounded in the same bar or in the same hole or whatever, um, please don't believe them. Uh, the nice thing about having 
the world. Not like your phone ringing and scaring the heck out of you. All right, so I'm trying to get a little bit of these wires pushed down a little bit. Okay, so the next thing to do is to take this breaker right here, that's what I'm doing, and I'm gonna lock it in like that. Now it's flat, everybody's happy, and that's it. That's, that's pretty much the install of the breaker. So let me see how much wire I have here because I'm kind of getting this box a little filled up and I don't really want to be running wire all over the place. So I think, well, let's go the other direction with that one. There we go. About like that. So I cut those two off right there. That one's good. Alright, so now I just need to get them stripped. A little bit of strippage on 12 gauge. Now, one thing about 12 gauge versus 14 gauge, 12 gauge is extremely hard to bend. And I know there's going to be someone out there who says, no it's not. Well, compared to 14 gauge it is. Um, Again, marking this red so that people know that the person who installed it wasn't an idiot and marked the ground on here. Okay, so the reason I say that 14 or 12 gauge is extremely hard to bend, if I had to put a hook in these to put them up here, which I do have to unscrew them, usually they're unscrewed, um, there's no way in the world, well, Maybe there's might be one or two people in the world that can unbend that and make it straight or to even put the hook in to without using any tool. But for, like I said, 14 gauge is a little different. That can be very pliable. All right, so pick the right side of the screw. Hold, there's a hole on each side. Pick the one on the right. Tighten that up. Pick the one on the right. For the white wire, red wire. Get that out of there before. There we go. There we are. Very nice. And that's tight, and that's tight. Now, a little bit different test for the um for the 220. Okay, this is called a continuity test. So you put it up to the little diode. On this one, it's a 10 months. I gotta hit select to get to the noise, to the noise for the continuity. So that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for, if I put this on the ground and I touch on this leg, nothing, that leg, nothing, and the two legs in together, nothing. That's good, all right? That means from here to there, nothing is touching. Now, I'm gonna flip that on, I'm gonna move this back to voltage. Now voltage, if I put this on the ground, okay, 120, 122, 122, all right? Hopefully you can see that. So that's all good. Now, this is what makes it 220. When you cross the bridge between the two legs, that's gonna say 243, 244. Okay, hopefully you can see that. That's what 240 means. So, this guy is done. Everybody's happy. I don't have my, my nuts with me. Put this back up. That I gotta find. 
Um, so right now I'm just going to shut this down just to keep it protected. Now, one last thing and we're going to call this a day. The hole on top is going to be our ground. So I'm going to stick that in there. I'm going to grab the hole on the side. You see it's 121, 120, something like that. I'm going to pull out of that, put it in the other side. You're going to see 122. And then when you put this in here, and like this, I just got to find them both. There you go, 244, 243.9. So this is working as, as desired. <laughs> this bunch of board just fell down in my shop. So what you're seeing is this is zero voltage, right? This is 120 volts. And this is negative 120. All right? And if my memory serves me right, you get a sine wave that comes up like this and then comes back down like this. And this is considered one cycle or one hertz. All right? So one cycle through. Hopefully you guys can see that. So this is 120 going down like that. When you have 240, um, this, this continues on forever, okay? It just keeps on going and going and going. When you have 240, this is coming down like that, coming back up over the top, coming back down, just like that. So this one here would be uh, the white wire or the red wire, and this is the black wire. All right, and this is your ground running across. So what this does for a motor is this keeps these less, there, there's more electricity being transmitted and it makes them run smoother because they're only hitting these highs here, okay? So as you can see, with the 120, they have to wait for the end of the cycle, the next cycle coming in. With the 240, you get the next cycle coming in while that 120 is dying off. So the second leg comes in and takes it in. Now if you had a third phase, that third phase would be even out a little bit differently because it would split down the middle of these guys and hit like this. Okay, so you get those. Now there is a fourth phase for those people that are, that are wondering and it looks something like this. So there's a four phase out there that even makes it even smoother, all right? So this keeps your everything going down. It gives you a few things. It gives you more torque. It gives you a smoother run and your amperage is not going like this all the time, all right? It also allows you to let your motor run a lot longer. So in industry, when they're running industry, they're either running three phase or they're running four phase, okay? This is very rare, four phases. Three phase is not rare at all. 240, definitely not rare, all right? 120 is really rare. So I don't think I've run a mill or like a Fanuc or Allen Bradley or anything like that that wasn't running 220, all right? Um, it is what it is. So if you like the video, click like. Please subscribe to the channel. Like I said, there, I'm gonna, this is going to be a build that's going to keep on going through for my Onefinity. The next thing is the table. I think I've got it figured out. It looks like it's going to be uh, 72 inches long, which is 6 feet, and then 80 inches wide. And there's going to be a canopy that's coming down on top, which will have a probably a trust roof or, or whatnot up on it for support. So again, please hit like, please subscribe to the channel, come back and see more. Have a good day.